Hello and welcome everybody, it's Karen. I've got a video today that is all about stenciling on acetate. And the first real question is how to get color onto the acetate. So here, I have already stenciled using a bunch of different inks. Uh, that's Dist Distress Oxide, Archival Ink. This is some Catherine Pooler ink, which would be a dye ink. And then I've got some alcohol ink. So those first three, you can see, I left those for a few hours and they still had not dried, which is the problem with acetate. Here, this alcohol ink, although it, it did dry, it didn't stencil terribly well. You can see how fuzzy the lines are. Now, this was uh, Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink, and I left this one sitting out for a couple of days, <laughs> and it still did not dry. So one way to get around that is to do your stenciling into a laminating folder, which is what I've got here. You can see I've just stenciled with the same white Hero Arts uh, Unicorn Pigment ink, and I let it dry overnight. Uh, and I'm just putting on a little of this uh, Distress Glitter Dust, just to give it a bit of sparkle. And then I can close up the, the laminating folder, put it in a parchment carrier, and I run that through my laminator. And this is how it comes out. So you can see that that ink has kept the stencil shape it didn't smudge or smear, it, it did really quite well. So that's definitely one way that you can get the look of inking on acetate. Now here I've used some acrylic inks. The one on the left is Cosmic Shimmer Shimmer Paint, and it's, these are all dry, but you can see if I use my palette knife, it, it comes off. So if your card was face down on the surface, it may peel off that paint, or if somebody scratched it, it might. Uh, you could possibly use the opposite side like I showed just there. But in all honesty, I didn't like the way any of these stenciled. I found they all seeped under the stencil itself. They were quite liquidy and they just did not uh, stencil very well. This is Arteza uh, metallic gouache paint. It was the worst of all for sticking on the acetate. I just had to bend this and the, all that paint came off. So the acrylic paints are a little tough as well to use. So this is one of my favorite mediums. This is Liquitex uh, Gloss Heavy Gel and it is a gloss, which I think is what I like so much about it. I think you can get this in a mat. And there are other brands. I know Golden has something that is like this. Really, it's meant to stretch your paints, but it does stick. It's a thickener, basically. So I've had this for about a year, and I've still got some left. It is still um, nice and moist. I do keep that masking tape on my jar, and I don't know if that helps or not. But here in this first technique, I'm just going to spread this Liquitex um, gel medium on just straight on. I've got my acetate underneath my stencil. And I'm going to use some Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Sparkle Powders now. And I mean, any shimmer powder would work, Nuvo would work, um, any of those ones would work. So you really want to put a fairly heavy, heavy application of this powder on. And then you're going to spritz it a few times with water and it's just to get those powders to activate. You don't want so much water on that it's going to seep under your stencil, but you do want to see those powders start to move and blend. And I left it on, it doesn't, you can't tell that in the video, but I did leave it on for about a minute just to let the powders really start to move. But then I peeled it off and then you want to wash your stencil right away. So this is how it dried. This is the Pixie Sparkle side and then the magic happens when you turn it over. It just glows, it's just stunning. I never get tired of looking at this because it's always so bright and sparkly. So I think that's a really fun way of getting some color onto your acetate. Now here's the palette test. It does not come off. So I was really pushing hard under the edge there and it didn't come off. Now these are those same Arteza metallic gouache paints, just in different colors. And I'm mixing them each with a little of the Liquitex. 
and then I'm going to spread them on. So if you remember, these Artisa paints were the ones that just peeled right off. So here it is dried. It's not coming off whatsoever. Uh, I had to really work hard to get it to kind of budge a little bit there. So it's really on. And there's nice texture to this. It feels, to the touch, it feels quite interesting. So here's another way. I'm using some Distress Ink Reinker. This is Peacock Feathers. And I'm just using one drop of this reinker. That's all it takes. Those reinkers are quite intense colors. So I'm just mixing that up, and then I've got this glitter dust again. And I'm just putting a couple of pinches worth of glitter in here. I started with the one and mixed it in just to see how it was. And then uh, I thought maybe I could use a little more. So I've put a second little pinch of glitter dust in here. And then just spread that straight on. So again, my acetate is underneath the stencil. And there you can see it when it comes off. So it's quite soft and pretty actually that, but there is nice glitter. Now all that excess, I don't waste it. I put it on scrap cardstock and then I can use that for die cutting or sentiments, whatever. And here it is dried. You can see all that sparkle and shine. This was really pretty in real life. My lighting isn't so great, but it's really very pretty this. So either side could be used, so that's a thought. Now, most texture pastes you can use. This is Luna Paste by Cosmic Shimmer, and it has a lot of mica in it. Um, and I would suggest that if you're going to use texture paste, try it out first on a little piece of acetate and just see how it does when it's dry. Does it peel off or does it not? And does it take to the stencil quite well? So here you can see how bright and shiny that is, and both sides can be used with this again. So I have this Decofoil Metallics. Um, it's a gold uh, paste. Mine was really drying out. I had to add a bit of water to it and mix it in. But it's got um, quite a, an interesting, it's quite a rough texture on the, on the side that I applied the, the paste. But if you flip it over again, it looks really nice from the other side. Okay, now transfer gels and foiling gels, all of these can also be used on acetate. This is a Heidi Swap uh, texture paste that I'm putting on here. So I'm putting it straight on through the stencil and it goes on. It's quite um, a milky color when it goes on first. It doesn't take too long to dry, uh, but once it is dry, it goes more translucent as you can see here. And it's also got a little bit of a texture to it. So you can use any of the reactive foils with this. Uh, the deco foil, the Heidi Swap foil, just not hot foils. So I'm putting it on with a shiny side up. And then I put it in my, my parchment carrier, I put it through the laminator. And when it comes out, it foiled really quite well. You can see the foil on the on the desk there that's left over. It, it really took quite well. I just found this piece to be really bright and, sh bright and shiny. It's very much an in-your-face <laughs> kind of foiling, this one. Okay, so if you have some heat-resistant acetate, uh, you can also emboss on it. So I've used my anti-static powder tool there and I'm going to ink over my stencil now with the Versamark ink. So I put quite a good application of this ink on all over and then I'm going to cover it now with a silver embossing powder. And of course then you're going to just shake off the excess and heat set this with your heat gun. And it worked out really well. So there you have that. It's another idea. And you know, with the acetate, both sides could be used. So if you find one side's a little too bright and shiny, look at the back side. It might be the one that you prefer. Okay, now another idea is to use double-sided adhesive tape. Here I've covered my acetate uh, with a piece of double-sided tape. And I've got my stencil there. I'm going to put some Versamark ink on the back of it uh, because it's going to go down onto that that adhesive tape and so you don't want it to stick to the the tape 
So the Versa Mark helps to release it afterwards. So I'm just carefully putting it on. And then I'll use the release paper to sort of press it down gently into that uh, tape. And I'm using some Jacquard uh, powder here. Now you could use Perfect Pearls, either would work. But I'm just uh, using my finger to push it into that um, exposed adhesive there. And I just went over the whole thing with this same powder. Shook off the excess or just sort of tapped it off. And then once you take that stencil off, where the stencil was, there is still exposed adhesive. So I went back in with my glitter. So just a microfine glitter. This was actually from the dollar store. Uh, and I'm just sprinkling that on over top and then using a little brush to brush it into that exposed area. So you can see how that stencil pattern really gets picked up now by the darker glitter. And there it is. So both sides are really fun to use on this one again. And then on the right side, I did exactly the same thing, only I reversed it. So I put the glitter down first and then I put the powder on after. And so that's the difference um, that you get with that. So it might be kind of fun to experiment a little bit. But you can see through them slightly. And again, the back side is really pretty with all the acetate shining. So I don't know, lots of thoughts there. Okay, so then I went on to make some cards for you and I thought I would just leave this in at the beginning here. I haven't, I'm, I don't have too much card making for you. But I wanted to show some different ways of attaching that acetate because on this one, I didn't want to frame it. So I'm actually putting double-sided adhesive tape right down onto the front of my card base, pressing it down, and then I've got that piece that I used the Liquitex on. And I'm actually putting the Liquitex side face down. So it's the raised side, and I'm going to put that down. So I line up the bottom edge now where I haven't exposed the adhesive uh, tape there. So I'm just making sure the bottom and the sides are staying nice and even, and then I can press the top down onto the exposed adhesive tape. And then it's just a matter of carefully pulling off the rest of the backing paper and just pressing that, uh, car that acetate down onto the card front. And once I had it there, I pressed it with my fingers first, but then I put the release paper back on and uh, just pressed over that just to make sure it was all adhering to that adhesive tape on, underneath. So that's the card. Uh, I thought that was really quite a fun card. It's very shiny because the acetate is facing up, but there's also all that glitter from the glitter dust mixed in with that Liquitex. Now this is the Pixie Sparkle card, and I just wanted to show you first uh, how it looks against a gold mirror background. Uh, if I take that inside away, there it is against white. So it's definitely worth thinking about what you put underneath these acetate cards. So here I've used the nesting curved rectangles die to die cut out the center of my mirror card, uh, and I've got that the remaining piece lined up on the front of my card. And I'm just going to replace this piece I've die cut out so I know where everything will fit on the front of my card. Now on the back of the remaining piece, I've put some double-sided adhesive and I am just removing the opposite corners. And I just fold that tape back, that release paper back now the bottom left corner and the top right corner do not have any exposed adhesive yet. So I can line those two up. And once I've got them where I want them, then I can press down, I'm pressing down on the bottom right corner and the top left. And then you can remove the release paper and it should all fit into place fairly well. And then once I had all of this done, I put more adhesive uh, tape on the back of that acetate and did exactly the same thing now onto the card front. So this is going right onto my card base. So that way you don't see any adhesive under that tape or under the acetate. And that's the final card. Now I will list everything down below 
I've used all Paper Rose products for the final cards. Uh, here, this one, I had that background already in my stash, but I've made that a see-through window with the Luna Paste um, acetate that was done there. This one, I have used the new arch oval frames from Paper Rose, and I just fussy cut out that little image from uh, one of the paper packs. It's really a fun texture, that one. Now, I trimmed down that, that was the foiled piece, and I trimmed it down because it was so bright and shiny, and I've just added a few leaves and flowers and made it a wedding card. Here I have used the hand stitching to embossing folder for the background and trimmed down that, uh, that's the deco foil metallics uh, little acetate band that I did. And this was the double sided adhesive uh, acetate piece that I made with the glitter. So there you go, there's a few ideas for you everybody. I hope that's uh, inspired you a little bit to get out the acetate and your stencils and give it a go. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you'll come back the next time. See you later.